Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate, appreciate you stopping by. As always, if you get any benefit out of these videos, please do us a favor and smash the like button. Also, if you like this kind of content, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the little bell so you'll be notified when we do future videos. We always appreciate it when you guys do that. So, um, today's video is on hatching chucker partridges and uh, the brooder process also. And I apologize for squinting a little bit. Um, now we got a big truck going by. But I apologize for squinting. I'm, the angle that I have here is kind of in the bright sun. I wanted to be here so you could see the, uh, the slightly red-necked quail hutch that I built for these chucker partridge chicks. Um, I have another one over. You can't see it. It's just behind this tree here outside the camera. Um, another one just like this one that I built for the and I have quail in it right now and I have another video on the channel if you're interested in the hatching process for those quail and I have videos on how I built these hutches too so if you're interested in that you know, go to the channel and you can look at that so let's get to this video and let's talk about the hatching process of chucker partridges okay the hatch date for uh, chucker partridges it takes about 23 to 24 days for them to hatch. Lockdown day is day 20. You fill the incubator up with as much water as you can and you don't open it until at least 48 hours after the first chick hatches. You can see the sticky note that I have. You want to write all those dates down. The start date that you started them in the incubator, the lockdown day and the hatch day so that you always uh, remember. Now here's the second incubator I had some in. This says 101. This uh, incubator was really at just a little bit below 100. That's why it's super important to have a second therm thermometer that you can stick in there and double check the temperatures because temperatures are very important when you're hatching. Here is day 23. They, a bunch of them have just hatched. You can tell they're pretty weak. Um, and again, like I said, they're all locked down. I'm not going to open up till about 48 hours after the first uh, chick hatched. Um, they, they can live up to 72 hours um, without it being opened up. And you don't want to open it up because uh, when you open it up, the it'll kill the ones that are in the process of hatching. Now this is day, uh, this is actually 35 hours after the first chick hatched. And you can see most of them are fluffed up. There's still a new, a couple of new ones that are still kind of weak, but most of them are looking really healthy. Today's the day that I take the chucker partridge uh, baby chicks uh, out of the incubator and move them into the this brooder box that I really like. And there's those little little uh, cute guys all in there running around I saw them figure out the food already I haven't seen any of them do the water yet hopefully they'll kind of you got to kind of watch them in the beginning and okay I've seen them uh, they, they've seen them eating food so I know some of them have figured out the food thing I haven't seen any do the water yet but I just barely put them in as soon as one of them figures it out the rest of them all figured out. So there are those little guys. One of them sacked out. Kind of sleepy, huh? So I just love this incubator. Just keeps the temperature regulated. I like to have a, a thermostat on the side that I can double check the temperatures. Doesn't look like it's quite up to temperature yet. I just barely put them in and so I had the doors open for a bit. But it's pretty close. They look pretty comfortable in there. So we'll check on them a little later. Okay, today the checker partridge chicks are nine days old. I have them here in my hatching time brooder box that I really, really like. So I'm going to bring the camera in close so that I can show them to you. So. Okay, if you look in there, it looks like nobody's home. Uh, checker partridges. 
Checker partridges are wild birds. Matter of fact, I ordered these from uh, Red Legs Unlimited, I think is the website. They're out of Eastern Idaho, I believe, or possibly Oregon. Uh, anyway, um, I think it's Eastern Idaho, but anyway, uh, so these ones are, are bred and most people that buy them release them into the wild. So these are literally wild birds. That's why they're all huddled back there hiding from me because I just changed, put another layer on their paper towel. I'll show you what the paper towel gets looking like. Uh, well, it doesn't look too bad there, but, uh, let's see. It, it gets kind of nasty, so you uh, basically what I do for the first week in this brooder box, there's uh, mats that you lay on the floor um, for about the first week and a week to week and a half. Um, and then what you're supposed to do is pull the mats out and the poop drops down to the poop trays. Um, you can see I still got. I'm, <laughs> I haven't cleaned out the poop tray from the quail that just got out of this. Quail were just in this a week ago. Um, but anyway, um, and so, uh, anyway, so these guys are just about to the point where I'm going to pull the paper towels. But for the first week, it's so easy because literally all you do, you don't have to pull the old paper towels out. You have the mats down, and then you just lay a layer of paper towels on there. It looks like this. And then for the first four or five days, you just once a day come out and lay another layer of paper towels on top. Just today, it's starting to get to the point. I've, I've laid two layers today. Um, I did one at seven this morning and then one at uh, just, just before I filmed this. And so uh, you got to switch to doing it a couple times a day. And then pretty soon you take the, like tomorrow or the next day, I'll probably take the... I'll probably start with just one, take the mat out on this side, and then the next day take the mat out on this side, and then finally I'll I'll take the mat out of that one uh, based on how they're adjusting to the temperature. Um, over here is where you can control the temperature on this brooder box. You can see it's reading in Celsius. When I first put them in there, I had it right at 40, or just a hair under 40. And as they were going through here, they they normally don't spend all the time huddled up like that. Normally, when I have the door shut and I haven't been bothering them, you know they're all running around just like quail. Um, and you can tell um, when they get hot. Some of them will lay out in here on this feeder, and this this end section of the brooder box is cooler because the heat source is in these two, and so they'll. I noticed them starting to spend a lot more time in this end and then laying out here. So I, I just adjusted the temperature down a little bit and then I kind of watched them for half a day. And so I've just, as they, as they were hot, you can tell when they're not feeling hot because they're spread throughout the whole brooder box evenly and they look comfortable. If they get cold, they all huddle up like they are right now. That's not because they're cold. That's because they're scared of me. Um, but uh, but anyway, and then, so you just kind of, you can, that's another thing I like about this brooder box is you can just kind of tell what temperature they need to be at by how they behave in there, and you just adjust it accordingly. Okay, well, I hope that was interesting. I hope you guys got some benefit out of that. I appreciate you watching the video uh, all the way to the end, and, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks so much.